Mr. Zagari here, Zags A Push, and we're counting down the days to May 19th. And this is one of the last few videos that we will be making, but let's get started. We are talking about Richard Nixon, and this is going to be quick, and this is going to be just the takeaways of the Nixon presidency. I'm also going to include in this video um, quick uh, clips of the Ford administration and the Carter administration. Those links will be in the description. So here we go. Let's get started. Zags a push. Let's go with the Nixon takeaways. So I got three of them for you. Big takeaways here from the Richard Nixon administration. One, the credibility gap is going to widen. So why is the credibility gap going to widen during the Nixon administration? One, he has a secret plan to end the war in Vietnam, his Vietnamization, his Nixon doctrine, his peace with honor, okay, all part of his plan to end the war in Vietnam. But what does he really end up doing? It's, you know, the secret bombings of Cambodia. And really what in reality, it looks like he's trying to end the war in Vietnam, or at least he's saying he's trying to end the war in Vietnam, but it also looks like he's expanding the war in Vietnam. And we're going to see some uh, blowback from that with regards to the uh, uh, protest movement rising up again, and most notably in Kent State. So again, what I should revert back to is this credibility gap was really um, started in 1968 under the Johnson administration uh, with the Tet Offensive as Walter Cronkite uh, brought the notion to the American people when he editorialized uh, that at best this war was going to end in a stalemate. So we see with Nixon, his secret plan to end the war in Vietnam is expanding the credibility gap. We also have the Pentagon Papers. So we're seeing here again what the government is saying to the people and what is happening um, in reality are two totally different things. There is that gap. So the Pentagon Papers are the, the leak um, Daniel Ellsberg leaks papers from the Defense Department that Robert McNamara, volumes and volumes of papers, um, leaks to the New York Times and the New York Post regarding how basically the uh, Vietnam War was an unwinnable war. And again, showing that the government knew that uh, the impact and, and the outcome of this war was not going to be favorable to the United States. But they kept telling the United States that the end was in sight. The end was clear. We have clear objectives. And in reality, none of that was true. And again, we go back to Walter Cronkite. And Johnson says um, that uh, if I lost Walter, I've lost middle America, meaning that you know that's going to lead to his demise and why he's not going to run in re-election in 68. But with the Pentagon Papers, we're also going to see is why is Nixon um, really – uh, pushing for uh, these papers not to be released through through the media because they're not really calling out Nixon per se. They're calling out really dating back to the Eisenhower administration or dating back to absolutely the Kennedy and Johnson administration. What Nixon is doing is trying to stop the leaks in uh, in the office, meaning that that the office that the president of the United States is above the law of the land because that's going to lead us into our next issue with Watergate. So the Pentagon Papers started this leak where we have the plumbers breaking in and they break into Daniel Ellsberg's um, psychiatrist's office to, to dig up information about that. And then that will eventually snowball into uh, Watergate where the, uh, a group of Nixon cronies, so to speak, uh, break into the Democratic National Committee's headquarters in the Watergate office building and the cover up ensues. And at the end of the day, Nixon resigns from office after uh, just lies and 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 um, uh, misinformation and trying to be above the law. And what we see here is that the this, this massive distrust between the, the government and the American people. Uh, the biggest thing to come out of the Watergate hearings is that the Constitution does work, that the American system does work, that no one is above the law, not even the president of the United States is above the law of the land. And we see um, that Nixon does resign as a result of this. So again, the credibility gap is one of the major takeaways here, secret bombings in Vietnam, uh, Pentagon Papers, and Watergate are all playing major um, roles in this credibility gap, the, the, the widening of the distrust between the government and the American people. 
Next takeaway is Nixon's Southern strategy, okay? Uh, and what the Southern strategy basically is, is that Nixon is going to devise a plan, a political strategy to form a Republican um, majority by appealing to millions of voters of what he would call the silent majority. And this silent majority is going to in include in many Southern whites who Nixon would target with plans such as asking the courts to delay integration plans for schools, delay busing orders, as well as offering federal monies back to schools who were not integrated. Nixon was playing off the prophecy of, of Lyndon Johnson after the 64 Civil Rights Act that he said that the Democrats are going to lose the South for a long time to come. And what we should note here is that while Nixon is trying to turn the South red, so to speak, it should be noted that this is not going to be like an overnight type of thing uh, where we see in the 76 election that the Democrats actually won. Jimmy Carter won the South. This is going to manifest itself over years and years and years. We do see this start to really come to fruition uh, during the, the Reagan years. So the Southern strategy where Nixon is uh, riding the coattails of the Civil Rights Act of 64 and trying to target those um, white Southerners to jump on board with the, um, with the, uh, with his, um, with the Republican party. In addition to this, this is all also part of the rise of conservatism. That is an underlying current of this time period, uh, basically starting in 1964 with Barry Goldwater and going right through the Reagan revolution. Um, so this is all, you know, interconnected with each other. So, it could be good outside information if you see that on DBQ. Next and lastly, is Nixon a progressive? I mean, we he, we see this conservative movement happening. We see Nixon as this hardline law and order type of guy. But, you know, what Nixon says and what Nixon does are two totally different things. So in reality, well... What Nixon said and what Nixon actually did at times contradicted each other. Um, with the underlying growth of a new conservative movement growing, again, since Barry Goldwater in 64, Nixon looked to slow down governmental programs and civil rights. While he did do, uh, while he did, did to, while he did to some, uh, to some extent, excuse me, he also expanded such programs. He created the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and Title IX. The EPA looked to combat the ongoing environmental issue, while Title uh, IX looked to end sex discrimination in schools. Lastly, he also expanded Social Security benefits to reflect inflation rates at the time, and he also um, expanded the Keynesian model of economics, where the government was um, becoming more involved in economics to combat the inflation and the economic crisis of the 70s. So what we could argue is that Nixon is more from the school of Eisenhower, more of this ideology of more of a modern republicanism, this moderate um, when it comes to republicanism, um, which clearly makes sense because uh, Nixon was Eisenhower's vice president for his eight um, for his eight years in office from 53 to 61. So again, this is a quick video. We're going to see that uh, in the uh, there's a link in the description regarding the Ford and Carter um, presidencies. And I wanted to put out something quick of the big takeaways of Richard Nixon. We're under three weeks away, folks. So it's crunch time. Okay, we should be studying. We should be getting study groups up. Um, you know, we're, we're posting uh, review materials. Review materials are posted in Google Classroom. Uh, so be on the lookout for that as well as our next video coming up will be part of the Reagan revolution. So this is Mr. Zagari, Zag Zay Push. We'll catch you later.